I am Cody Matthew Johnson. I am a composer and music producer. My name is Yoko. I'm a co-composer. And we're back to talk about the making of the music for Trek to Yomi. So the stage was set to create the soundtrack for this world, but we were limited by the instruments of the Edo period. And so we have all these instruments that are more well known from the Edo period, like the shakuhachi and the koto and shamisen. But outside of that, there are many more that just haven't been so globally known here in the 21st century. So it was our job to take those instruments and instead of grabbing all of my tools and my synthesizers and all these other things that I usually use in my music, we had to sit down and stop and think and say, no, this is our palette. This is what we work with. This is what we have. And this is how we respect this culture and how we respect the, the artistic integrity of this project. In this game, there are themes of love, duty, fury, and balance. So in Trek to Yomi, there are maybe different characters that represent each of these themes. And so we approached these thematically right off the start because we knew, since this was a big part of the game, that we needed identifiable textures and melodies for each of these themes. And as you venture through the game, the player is presented with choices. So there is a narrative branching element that can change how this music develops. First theme we addressed was the love theme, which is paired with a character named Aiko. For Aiko's theme, we dialed in on some of the sweeter, softer textures and instruments that come from the Edo period. One of the instruments that I really like to use for Aiko theme is koto, which is a Japanese string instrument. It's very flexible, and it was great because sometimes Aiko can be very sad, romantic, angry, anxious, and I use pretty high range flute to set the mood to something really dark. Aiko. We all have the dark side. Figured you start one place and you, you boomerang to the other side, we went to Fury, which represents our antagonist, the embodiment of evil in our game, the warlord Kegiru. We started with the extremities of these instruments, specifically taiko drums. For Kegeru and Fury, we wanted to reserve the intensity and the pounding nature of very extreme taiko playing, where, where you were just beating aggressively with rods and mallets and all sorts of other sticks to pull out a ton of aggression and attack. And in addition to taiko drums, we looked at some other instruments, such as the shakuhachi, overblown and aggressive, on top of the smashing taiko drums and the furiously aggressive shakuhachis is the shamisen, this slap bass-like instrument that has aggressively sharp, transient, and loud attacks. So we have that blended in there with the taiko drums and the shakuhachis to just get a purely aggressive sound out of these instruments. And that brings us to our third theme, duty, which is represented by the character Senjuro, the father of Aiko. Sinjuro is the protector of Hiroki's town, and he is the sensei of Hiroki. So we look at flutes and other instruments that might have been more readily available to a, a villager during the Edo period. I didn't use that high range. I try to create something more like ritual music or ceremonial. It gets us these tones that are very mellow, calm, easy to listen to. Duty is all about control and dedication of yourself to other things. It's not about individualism. And so that control and serenity and, and calmness is something that we wanted to capture in Sanjuro's theme. The village in this game does have a theme. We use the village theme as a status quo. And Yoko wrote this piece that beautifully matches what a traditional life might look like in Edo period Japan. Creating the theme for the village, we studied a lot of Edo period traditional music and cultural instruments to set the basic tone to describe and illustrate the time. 
I think we set a really nice tone by creating something simple but really catchy. And last but not least, we find ourselves at balance. Shiroki was a representation of balance. He had the similar instrumentation of Sanjiro. So we find taikos, a very powerful instrument, but played very softly. So we have the presence of power, but the restraint of that power. For the harmony and the melody of this theme, we have a koto and a flute. And so these two instruments delicately dance back and forth together. And similar to some of the melodies of the composer Arvo Part, we find that one voice alone feels incomplete. And these two elements woven together with that, that bottom end, that, that support from the taiko drums, creates our version of balance. Trek to Yomi is a linear narrative experience. It's more or less a side scroll. And in that way, it has a very cinematic sensibility to it, especially given the context of 1940s cinema. So we could carefully tailor the journey from chapter to chapter and decide very intentionally how this music developed. As the title implies, it's about the journey. And as the journey goes, of course, the music develops from a peaceful village where all the main characters live in and grew up to this fantasy world, Yomi. Yomi is basically the afterlife world. And as you start to look at Yomi, you see expressions of Shintoism. And diving a little bit deeper into that, we start to see the appearance of a musical ensemble called a Gagaku. Gagaku is Japanese musical style. Originally imported from China, it was brought to Japan about 8th century and slowly developed from there. It's performed as royal court music and ceremonial music. And it's particularly rare and very specialized where it has its own theory of composition, its own theory of performance, and it is considered sacred to Japanese culture. The music is very unique. It has a different instrument, very exclusive to Gagaku style itself. Instruments such as the hichiriki, the ryuteki, kako, taiko, biwa, and sometimes a few other auxiliary percussion instruments. And the way the music is performed is a sort of unique call and response where there is a, a leader of the ensemble, typically the hichiriki player, who plays a melody, and then the entire ensemble responds with all of these micro differences and it creates what we call heterophony, which is the same melody being played in multiple ways at the same time. And it creates a very beautiful and haunting tonality. And so we needed to find a way to incorporate this culture of music into the score for Trek to Yomi in the most respectful way possible. So we decided we'd bring together a Gagaku ensemble and they would play some of the most well-known Gagaku pieces that have ever been written. Think of it as the top 40 Gagaku. We would play five, six, seven of them down, record them in a bunch of different ways. But even in Japan, there are not many performers or instrumentalists who could play Gagaku instruments. However, we successfully hired a group of amazing Gagaku performers to record high quality Gagaku music to utilize in this game, Trek to Yomi. We recorded for hours just doing different interpretations of these pieces you know, without different elements so we can capture all of these different tonalities and we can take those and carefully weave them throughout this entire score. And before going into these recording sessions, we were able to find frequency response charts so it shows scientifically what this music and what these instruments sounded like. And we noticed there's a ton of ultrasonic frequencies, frequencies we cannot hear. And so before these sessions, we talked with the engineer, Mary Shinohara. She's a fantastic audio engineer based out of Tokyo. And so sure enough, we, we put together the equipment to record at the highest possible fidelity. And in our research, we can confidently say that this is the highest fidelity recording of a Gagaku ensemble ever recorded. And in addition to the Gagaku performers in Tokyo, we had a great team of local Japanese musicians here in Los Angeles. 
I cannot stress enough that the team here we hired in Los Angeles, they were amazing. Real recording made this music come to life. We had a very talented Shinobue player, which was a flute. His name is Ryoji. A Koto player, Yuki. Jamie, our shamisen player. And we recorded an interesting instrument called the horagai, which is a shell horn made from a seashell. And it is a, a horn that samurai or villages would use to either warn of attack or that they are about to attack. We also worked with a local percussion legend here in town, M.B. Gordy, to record taiko drums. And then there was a spattering of, of other instruments, some that we played ourselves, or other local musicians that played flutes or accents or adding some colors and textures on top of the score that we had already created. And that's more or less the nuts and bolts of how we put this score together, from conception to the initial writing process to the recording process, and all of the fantastically unique textures contained within, it all stitched together to make the soundtrack for Trek to Yomi. Once again, my name is Yoko from Empire Sound and Music. And I am Cody Matthew Johnson. Thank you very much for taking your time to watch this episode. I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes about this game and the music, and we hope to see you again in the future.